welcome back to the channel YouTube this is Dave and we have um, injection molding skills and more um, today we are going to go over sinks or sink marks um, and actually what they are and how to fix them um, and what causes them okay um, so I'm gonna read the description to you what it is a sink mark are small craters or depressions that develop in a thick area or thicker area of an injection molded prototype or shrinkage occurs in the inner portion of the finished product. The effects are somewhat like a sinkhole that you would have um, caused by shrinkage rather than erosion. So think about it like um, down in Florida you have these big sinkholes that happen. Well what happens is water goes in there and erosions it out. Well in a sink mark or sink is you have a thick area that don't cool properly and what it does is the heat actually shrinks it down so what happens is I'll show you this picture right here you can see right here how it just shrinks on the edges of here you can really see it really well so and then I wanted to show you guys I have a part here I cut this part away basically to show you but usually you get sink marks on the back side of where the ribs are so if this wall thickness is thinner than what your rib is what's going to happen is you're going to get a sink mark on the other side i don't know if you guys can actually really see that but there's sink marks right there you can barely see them but i wanted to show you that and then another example let me take you up here i'm going to show you my hard hat so <clears throat> what happens is on this hard hat if you look at the hard hat this area here is thick, so you can see the sink mark right there. So what it is, is it's like a there's a detail that comes out that makes this area open. On the other side, it's really thick right there. So then it makes a sink mark on the other side. If you look on the other side of this thing, it's not as bad on this side. You can still see it. You can still see it like kind of, if you're looking at it, you can see it right there. So, and then you can see the sinks where the ribs are in this helmet. But like I said, that's where the sinks are, are always like right in the areas, you know, right there. So let me put that back up there. Okay, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a couple things. So these are what I wrote down for sinks. So these are some ideas that you could try to do on your own. So if you look, barrel temperature too high, insufficient injection pressure or time, inaccurate cooling time, inaccurate um, insufficient cushion or hold time um, excessive non-return valve you know clearance um, mold temperature too high on opposite side of ribs so if you have a mold you want the other side to be a little cooler um, small gate or runners uh, improper uh, gate location excessive thickness at mating walls so you, like I was showing you on that part you don't want one side to be thicker than the other side improper flow rate and then inconsistent processing cycles so you want your process to be you know dead on and you want to make sure you're doing the correct things for your process so I'm going to show you guys a couple videos and then the one video that I have on here it shows you a part that the guy has and it shows you the differences between what a pocket is and how it's beveled and then it shows you the bosses and it shows you one cord out and then it shows you the ribs and it shows you what I'm talking about as far as if the wall thickness is thinner on one side than the other. When sink marks develop, we can define the problem in either of two ways. One, there is too high an internal stress within the plastic part caused by shrinkage. Or two, we can say that the part has too low a surface rigidity. If the plastic cannot shrink by forming a void inside, then the plastic shrinkage must occur on the outside of the part, a sink mark. The solution to eliminating sink marks then is to either reduce the internal stress or increase the surface rigidity of the part. What can the molder do to correct for sink marks? First, 
the molder must make sure the shot size is large enough. Most molds are run with a cushion ahead of the screw. The cushion should be small, but if there is no cushion and the screw bottoms during injection, none of the other machine controls that would normally help solve this problem will be effective. 5%, 50%, and 50%. When you have a thinner section in a wall, it becomes difficult to fill it with a resin. The resin hesitates when it gets up to the wall and has trouble flowing around. This 50% is beveled. The beveled edges help the resin to get past that barrier and flow through. The sharp edges are more difficult to fill. Here we have an extreme case, 25% of the wall thickness. You're likely to get pinholes or even complete areas that are unfilled with that. Here are two large blocks. This one is solid, this one is cored out. The solid one tends to have sink marks in the sides and also behind it. The plastic has shrunk and it doesn't give you a good feature. This block has been cored out. You can see the hole where it's cored out. You can see that it doesn't have the sink marks that the, the too thick piece does. You find the similar effect with these ribs. Many products need a rib design or a series of ribs as part of the product for, for structural strength or to support other parts. When you design a rib, you should ideally try and follow the 60% rule. The ribs should be no more than 60% of the parent wall thickness. Here we have four ribs. This one is 50%, the others are larger. Typically, when you have a larger rib, you tend to get the sink behind it on the opposite face. That's your thick and thin information. I hope you guys like those uh, videos, the illustrations that I showed you guys. I just wanted to let you guys know that my company that I work for does not sponsor any of my videos that I do. And I don't get paid for any of this stuff at all, guys. Just letting you guys know this. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the videos that I put out, the content that I put out. Because all I'm trying to do is just give everybody out there in the injection molding industry some ideas and some fixes on how to fix things. And a lot of the stuff, I do a lot of background checks on stuff just to make sure that I'm saying the right things. So please comment down below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Peace.